King of the Nerds. What was that show? I mean, I remember being obsessed with this show when it was on. I remember wanting to be on the show. I remember having a crush on some of the girls on the show. And I remember basically thinking one of the people on this show was a god. And I kind of want to explore that. This show is a reality show apparently inspired by the 1980s movie Revenge of the Nerds. Oh no! I mean... It was created and hosted by Robert Carradine and Curtis Armstrong, both actors from Revenge of the Nerds. A movie I'm going to mention as little as possible because it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> you may know Robert Carradine as Lizzie McGuire's dad and Curtis Armstrong as Snot from American Dad. This show ran from January 17th, 2013 to March 13th, 2015 and was on TBS. It was about 11 nerds and geeks living at Nerdvana, competing in different challenges to see who becomes king or queen of the nerds. The contestants included everything from board game enthusiasts like Ivan Van Norman, best known for his work on Critical Role and Geek and Sundry, and internet personalities like Jovenshire, who was a part of Smosh Games from 2013 to 2019 to literal NASA engineer Mujigay Cooper and neuroscientist Brandon Moore. I'm sorry, but these two things aren't even in the same ballpark. If I was just some guy making videos on the internet, which I am, and someone told me I'd be competing against a NASA engineer and a neuroscientist, I'd be nervous no matter what the competition was. The contestants were Elena Smith-Brown, Brandon Moore, Celeste Anderson, Daniel Mackey, Genevieve Pearson, Hendrik Linfer Inc., Ivan Van Norman, John Paparaki, Joshua Ovenshire, Maju Gay Cooper, who went by Moo, and Virgil Griffith. Some I favor, some not so much. I tried to watch this show. I really did, but it's just so cringy. But I kind of expected it to be. I mean, it was 2013 nerd culture. What else do you expect? Like, Prime, Tumblr, and Reddit years. And these are the exact type of people who were in the center of it. Look, I know I probably shouldn't be complaining about these things, but no matter if you were in or out of the culture, you gotta admit it was cringy. And that's not something to be ashamed of. I guarantee, if you travel back to 2013 and ask these people how they felt about things in 2006, they would tell you it was very, very embarrassing. Same thing if you went forward in time and asked people in 2027 what they think about things from 2020. I don't mean this in an overly PC, quote-unquote, snowflake way, but things change, culture evolves, and things age poorly, and boy howdy, did this age poorly. Like I said, I couldn't get through the entire show, but I did watch up until episode 5, and there are episode summaries online, so... I would get into individual episodes, but it's really not that interesting just explaining all the episodes. So here's a quick rundown of the premise. The episodes work like this. At the beginning of the show, the nerds were divided into two teams. Team Blextrophy and Team Servants of the Forsaken Orb. You see why I couldn't get through this? They would go into Nerd Wars. Challenges that would require the members of each team to work together in order to beat the other team and the challenge. The losing team would then have to nominate two people to compete in the Nerd Off, where two nerds would have to compete in another challenge. The winner got to stay, and the loser was sent home. The reason I decided to make a video on this show is because I think it was rigged. Whether or not the contestants or even the creators and host knew it, everything felt like it fell a little bit too perfectly into place. Spoiler alert if you want to watch the show, but Celeste wins and beats Genevieve. Genevieve who was shown throughout the show to be headstrong, loud, and not afraid to challenge other people, was beaten by Celeste, who was meek and quiet, and wasn't the most outstanding or noticeable person. 
the perfect underdog story for a group of nerds, not dissimilar to Revenge of the Nerds. Now, of course, there's probably a lot of contrary evidence to show this wasn't rig, but to say it was 100% honest with its content is without a doubt a lie, because it's reality TV. Ironically, a genre known for bending and stretching the quote-unquote truth, so it makes more entertaining content, usually through staged events and editing. This show was basically Big Brother or Survivor, with glasses, a Doctor Who poster, and a notebook full of fanfiction. Genevieve probably wasn't mean and intimidating like she was portrayed on the show. Celeste probably wasn't as meek and mousy as she was portrayed. Virgil was probably not an asshole like he was portrayed. Okay, well maybe he was because he was arrested in 2019. I won't go into the details why, but it involves cryptocurrency in North Korea. I feel like this show is interesting beyond the initial feeling of cringe. Nerd culture was on the rise when the show was on, but nowhere near as popular as it is today. I honestly feel like if this was rebooted or given a fourth season and put on Netflix or Hulu, it would be a hit. This show is a perfect time capsule for nerd culture before it became extremely popular to be a nerd. And I kind of want a modern iteration of it, but it would probably be all influencers whose only nerdy personality traits are that they've seen Star Wars, Marvel movies, and Harry Potter. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Did you watch King of the Nerds whenever it was on like I did? Did you watch the other two seasons? Because I remember being pumped when someone I watched on YouTube, Jay Witz, was on TV. Did you know there was a UK version that only lasted one season? Do you have any shows you want me to cover? Leave them in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe if you liked what you saw. I'm JT, and thanks for watching. Break it down. You think we rule the world and it's kind of scary, but our influence has gone extra planetary. We build satellites and make all your sallies work, while you're the douche on Earth acting like a jerk. Among us nerds, it's all sugar and spice, and we're studying the cosmos like Neil deGrasse Tyson.